Senators, find your seats. All right. I've been given to go ahead, so we will go ahead. I will go ahead and call this meeting. <coughs> So I hereby call to order the eighth meeting of the 62nd session of the Student Senate at 7 p.m. <laughs> Moving into roll call, when I call your name, please answer with either present or here. Senator Azidlani? Here. Senator Babin? Present. Senator Bradley, Senator Brown, Senator Castillo, present, Senator Coates, Senator Cowden. Present. Senator Cunningham. Thought I saw him. Senator Day. Here. Senator Izell. Here. Izell. Senator Flores. Present. Senator Gibson. Present. Senator Hopper. Here. Senator James. Here. Senator Kata. Present. Senator Kahinde. Senator Khan. Here. Senator Lube. Senator Majors. Present. Senator Matson. Present. Senator John Miller. Here. Senator Kate Miller. Here. Senator Morgan. Here. Senator Mounts. Present. Senator Navarro. Here. Senator Nazir. Present. Senator Nguyen. Here. Senator Njiao. Senator Owaru. Present. Senator Peterson. Present. Senator Reed. Senator Sanchez. Here. Senator Spencer. Present. Senator Tehran. Present. Senator Tubak. Present. Senator Tucker. Present. Senator Wang. Present. Senator Webb. Here. Senator Zacharias. Here. With that, we have met quorum with 33 total in attendance. Simple majority will be 17, two-thirds of present will be 22, and two-thirds majority will be 30. Moving into section three, approval of the minutes. With that, are there any corrections to the last week's meeting? Senator Flores. It says that we ha uh, were called to order at 7.02. Uh, we were called to order at 7.03. Any other corrections to be noted? Seeing none, we'll move into section four, 
public forum. <clears throat> With that, public forum provides a chance for individuals to have the privilege of speaking before the Senate. This is a time for the association to listen to what the community has to say, and to that we offer our undivided respect and attention. I would like to remind everyone that although we allow the speakers the privilege to use this platform, the opinions of the speakers do not necessarily reflect the opinions of the association or the university. Lastly, in the essence of time, we do limit speeches in public forum to a length of three minutes unless the speaker has spoken to us about it ahead of time. And with that, is there a representative for uh, the student section? Okay, so my name is Kylie. I work for the athletic department here at Wichita State. We are trying to do a rebranding of the student section for the basketball and the volleyball tournaments. And we want the students at Wichita State to have a say and take part in this so they feel like they have that opportunity and their voice is heard. So I'm up here to try to just talk to you guys. If you want to be involved, how would you like to do that? Currently, we have some flyers out. I can pass them around for you for a URL online to where students have the ability to submit name ideas. And then towards the end of October, we are going to go through those names, pick the top five that we think either are best or have the most submissions on. And then we're gonna do tabling in the RSC. We're gonna do voting online as well. So those students have the ability to vote on what their favorite names are. So if this is something SGA wants to be a part of and has the ability to do, to what extent are you wanting to be involved? And if you want to have say in the voting process and the name selections, um, how would it be best to kind of go about that and working with you all? That's kind of all I have. Are there any questions for the speaker? Senator Nazir? You probably already answered this, but what is what are the names for? So currently, the student section name that we have is Shocker Maniacs, and with the past couple years, our student section at, for example, basketball games and volleyball games has really gone downhill, and so we really wanted to take this opportunity to address, we see this issue, we see that students aren't wanting to be as involved and come to games, and so we figured if we can get the students involved, if we can say, you have a voice, we want to hear what you have to say, we're basically going to take what is currently Shocker Maniacs in that student section. If you have been to basketball games or volleyball games, then you know there's you know, sections 116 and 117. That's where all the students gather. That's where they're able to be rowdy. And we want to make sure that they feel comfortable in that area. So with having the opportunity to do this rebranding and the new name and having new t-shirts and banners put out, we want to make sure that they feel welcome and that they're more likely to come to events and they're more likely to turn out for these games if they feel like they've had an opportunity to say what they want to say. Any other questions for the speaker? Senator Wang. Um, I want to know if someone is interested on like being part of this project. Do you guys have a committee or time or space to meet other than online form for submitting a name? Sure. So we're in the process right now of working with Greek Life and with each one of the colleges on campus to get a representative from each one of those areas. Once we finalize that tally and everybody who is going to be involved, we're going to set up on, or excuse me, a meeting time to where it would be easier so we can all kind of talk in person face to face. Senator Miller. So just so I understand clearly, this is like to rename the student section so that you guys can make a new brand for all the apparel and stuff that we wear to the games to show our pride, basically, correct? Yeah, so basically the point behind it all is, is that I don't know if any of you all have been to a men's basketball game, for example, but there are a lot of older um, folks that start coming to games or they bring their kids, and students feel uncomfortable being rowdy and getting into the game because they don't want to disturb 
you know, the people that are sitting behind them or next to them. And so with this rebranding process, we're trying to make sure that we tailor that to the students. And if we have the ability to say the bottom section of 116 and 117 is for students only, they feel like we are taking into consideration their experience. And so with the rebranding and with the renaming, we want to make sure that they feel that way from the start through the end of the year and continuing on. Senator Tubach. So you're saying that implication will take place like the having students only in the certain sections. So that is going to happen regardless? That's what we're working on. So we want to implement all this by the first men's basketball game after the exhibition game, which is November 5th. So that's part of the meeting. What we really want to talk about are these things that people are really wanting. Is this going to affect the turnout of the student section? And if those are all yeses, which I kind of assume that they will be coming from a student perspective, then that's something that we're going to try to implement for sure. Any other questions for the speaker? Senator Wayne. What is your guys' ex um, like expected deadline to get a new name for the student section? So we are trying to have everything finished and ready to go, T-shirts, banners, all printed by November 5th. The last week in October, October 21st through the 25th, is when we're going to do our final polling um, to choose the last name. So the October 25th is a Friday. We're going to have the name selected by noon. That's the goal that day. That way we can have everything sent out, all of the graphics, all of the, the new name information to the t-shirt companies and to our banner companies. That way all of that will be ready and prepared for the first game. So final tally is October 25th. Any other questions for the speaker? Senator Sanchez. Is there some kind of like um, reward or like incentive for the people who submit names? There is a reward or an incentive. We haven't specifically figured out what it's going to be. What we're looking more towards is a gift card to the Shocker store or an apparel um, outlet to kind of get that Wichita State gear. Senator Miller, do you still have one? So on the apparel, is there going to be like new logos, like new woos and stuff like that? So regular logos will stay the same. The real rebranding that we're doing is just for student section apparel itself. So on the November 5th game, we are going to do a giveaway for the new student section name. We're going to do a t-shirt. It's going to have the new student section logo on it itself. But we're not making any changes to the woo or the flying W, anything along those lines. Senator Tucker. Have you all reached out to the business department at all, given that this is in line with the objective of the, the, the department training the students, right, for like PR, business purposes, et cetera? We haven't reached out to them in that aspect. We have contacted the colleges to get a representative to be a part of the committee. So if that's something that they want to bring to the table, then we can discuss it for sure. Senator Babin. What would you like uh, SGA to do to help with this process? I think the biggest thing is what do you think would be best? I want to go ahead and give you guys flyers, but I want to know if you guys kind of have that support behind us. If you want to be involved in the committee selection itself when we do start that in a couple weeks, who necessarily wants to be the representative for SGA? If you don't want to be involved, that's perfectly fine. I just want to know kind of where you guys stand, and if you want to do the support behind us, that's great, and if not, then that's perfectly fine as well. Senator Nazir. Um, um, sorry. Along with us promoting this um, as an organization, is there um, like any social media posts that we could share? Because um, I know a lot of people, yeah, pages. Because um, I know a lot of people get things from like other people's stories or um, their accounts. So is there any way that you guys could do that? Yeah, we can send you over whatever additional information you would like. Tweet-wise, Instagram post-wise, we can definitely do that on our accounts. So we have posted on Go Shockers, and then the student section page itself we're posting on and promoting as well. Uh, if you don't want to retweet or like anything along those lines and you want your own original tweets, we can send you that information over, definitely. Any other questions for the speaker? Seeing none, thank you for your time.
Can I leave these with you guys or pass them out? You may. Okay. Thank you. <coughs> Sorry about that. <coughs> so moving into item B for public forum, which we really don't have items, but uh, before we really get into it, I just wanted to let you guys know that we're going to be starting a new initiative where we're inviting other departments in to kind of give us a heads up of what's going on in their area of influence as well as, you know, what they can do for students, uh, what they can do for SGA, but also what SGA can do for them, and affording them a chance to get student input as well as you all to get input from those areas. Does that all make sense or does anybody have questions about that? Seeing none, Nancy. Good evening, folks. So I'm here in capacity as the Assistant Dean of Students. So I'm excited to talk to you a little bit about student involvement and kind of what my role as Assistant Dean of Students me means. So uh, do, is the PowerPoint up there? OK. So um, I sent it. I emailed it to you. So um, student involvement, we are right next door to student government in RSC 216. And um, there's many areas that we work with in student involvement. So our goal is to really connect students to um, co-curricular activities and experiences while you are here at Wichita State. And our motto is turning students into shockers. And we realize that when students come here, you're, you could have gone anywhere else. Um, you could have chosen other places or you may have transferred here for somewhere else But our goal is truly by the end of your experience here that you are a shocker that you're excited to be a shocker that you leave as that alum who's excited to come back and whether you're going to um, Athletics events fine arts events coming back to activities bringing your kids back to trunk or treat that's coming up like any of those activities that you come back to um, and participate in that you're proud to be a shocker and we're super excited for that and so our goal is to connect you outside of the classroom because we know that um, up to 70% of what you learn is actually outside of the classroom. And so the impact that you can have outside of what you do in the classroom is very important. Um, and I have students all the time that will come back or email or talk and say, you know, these are the, what I learned outside of the classroom, I'm utilizing in my um, profession, in my life, whatever it is. And so we want to make sure that you have that great experience while you're here as a shocker. And so student involvement, we have a variety of areas that we work with. And I think the unique thing that's um, about student involvement at Wichita State is that other campuses, these areas may be in many different departments. Here at Wichita State, they're all under one umbrella. And so it allows us to have a lot of collaboration, a lot of ways that we are connecting you with other student leaders. One of the things that we do each semester, and our cabinet and student chairs will be able to find this out, is we bring in all of what we call our SI leaders to have a retreat together. Because we want to make sure that they're collaborating, that they're talking, that they're networking, so that they develop those relationships so as you move forward, you know that, hey, I can reach out to the community service board, to our interfraternity council, whoever it may be, to make those connections. And so um, the different areas, wait, go back. So the different areas that we work with, uh, the Cadman Art Gallery, who knows where the Cadman Art Gallery is? Okay, if you don't, first floor of the RSC. Um, and it's unique in the space that it truly is in a student art gallery. A lot of galleries and student unions are not student art. They are traveling exhibits. So the fact that we keep it student art is unique to us. Um, and so we actually have an Instagram show down there right now. We have every two weeks, there's two different gallery spaces that we have. Um, the Cadman, the main gallery, and then the Looking Glass. We also have what we call campus events. Um, so how many of you attended B2SB or Back to School Bash? Okay, one of the largest events we put on. We have 15 to 1,800 students that come out to that right before school starts. So we do those kind of larger scale events. Um, we work with civic engagement, which is specifically our community service board. 
Um, Lee is excited. She was one of our exec for a few years. So our community service board really connects students with service opportunities in the community. And one of the things that we've gotten from feedback from surveys is students want to go out and do service with other students. Um, and they don't want to do it by themselves. So it's a great way to connect you with other shockers in going out and doing service, and whether it be with your student organizations, for a class, whatever it may be. Um, we also work with fraternity and sorority life. How many Greeks do we have in here? Yeah. So we have a number of Greeks. So we have 22 chapters. We have, we're going to hit 1,000 this year, um, students. So... We're getting there. We're going to eventually hit 10% of our population. We're about 8% of our population. And so our Greek organizations are values-based organizations that really stress um, sisterhood, brotherhood, but also um, academic, philanthropy, service, all of those things that are important to um, getting the word out. Leadership. Um, so we offer a variety of leadership programs. Um, pretty much all of them are free to students because we have a philosophy in student involvement that anyone is a leader. It's just tapping into what type of leader you are and the skills that you have. So we offer a variety of leadership programs. Service learning is one of those things. It's um, the university initiative. When I talked about the strategic plan earlier and applied learning, um, service learning follows under that umbrella, and it's a t attaching your coursework to service um, in the community or in the nation, wherever it may be. And so it's having that academic component to it. Our Student Activities Council, how many of you go to hypnotists, talked about trunk or treat earlier, comedians, all those kind of things, I'd say the fun type events. Um, that's what SAC does. And so they plan a, a variety, up to almost 100 events a year when it comes to different types of activities for students. And then you all, student government, um, is part of the umbrella of student involvement. And so Gabe and I have the pleasure of advising both of you um, and guiding you through the process of being involved with student government. Student organizations, what's our current tally? 326 student organizations. And so we've grown a lot in the last year and a half, year, year and a half. Um, so eventually we're going to get 400 and then 500. and have to hire more staff because that's a lot of student organizations. So, and a lot of you we know are involved in different student organizations. So we have seen tremendous growth. Um, and then traditions, so Shocktoberfest and Hippodrome, we have longstanding traditions that we plan. Um, and so these are all the different areas that student involvement works with. And so we do believe that we have an integral role in creating a campus culture that is vibrant, that is active, that's inclusive, that's diverse, but also is energetic and that provides you the variety. And that, that's one of the things I tell when I present at orientations that Wichita State, we have a large enough campus that there's variety, but it's not so large that you get lost. And I think that's one of the great things for the side of our campus. We have a lot going on, and we have a great variety. So there's something for everyone, and we want, as our mission, is to connect you to something. Because we know if you're going to get involved, you're more likely to stay here, but also do better in classes and matriculate, graduate, um, and also do better in life because we're preparing you better. So just wanted to yeah, give you a quick numbers because everyone likes numbers maybe. So I'll let you read through this, but we have a lot of, we collect a lot of data. We want to make sure that we're showing what we are doing within student involvement um, from the events that we plan to the variety of activities. It's a great way to get connected. I think specifically as dean of students or assistant dean of students, one of my roles is to advocate for you all. And that's one thing I do in meeting after meeting, day after day is talk about it from the student perspective. And that's why I'm brought into meetings a lot of time is to make sure, because a lot of the people in the room don't have as much interaction or is around students as, as I am. And so it's a way that I can advocate for you all and what your needs are. And so that's why it's important for me to hear and to listen to you all, um, but to get your feedback and to understand what your needs are. Um, the other part that um, advising you all is a part of my role, but also how many of you know that we have a new higher ed program here on campus is master level higher ed program. Okay, so like Gabe and I, we both have our master's degree in higher education. So it's a new program um, at Wichita State. It's a master's level program. They're eventually gonna add a doctorate level. And so one of the areas that now I get to teach or work with that is with that higher ed program. And so we have about 18 students in that program this year. Um, we have several grads within our office. 
um, and then throughout the campus, and so we're only looking to expand that. So if you're interested in going into kind of what we do, Gabe and I do, with higher ed and working in a college institution, we actually have a program near here at Wichita State because we'd love to keep some of our students here and provide that opportunity for you. So that's another area that I get to work with as assistant dean of students. So student involvement, um, contact us. So we're on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, website. Find out more information about us because we are here to serve you, here to help you, here to understand concerns, questions, um, and best know how to create this campus culture that you all want. So that was really quick, but, but student involvement. So right next door, um, my office, I have an open door policy. So if you ever want to come chat, talk, or want to set up a meeting with me, happy to do so because that's what my job is is here to serve you as best I can and understand your needs so thank you would you like to take questions sure if they have are any. there any questions for the speaker such a good job they know everything yeah. Nancy <laughs> thank you Moving into section five, officer reports, item A, student body president. Hello everyone. Um, so for myself, um, on Friday, so this past Friday, I spoke at the National Advisory Council um, and just provided them an update as to what SGA is doing and what our goals are for this session. Um, that was for the foundation. Um, it's really just a lot of their uh, council members, so just, you know, getting letting them know what SGA is up to this session. Um, that went over really well. Um, today and tomorrow, I have been at the presidential search committee once again all day long. Um, so today, I obviously was not in the office, and I will not be in the office tomorrow either. Um, I just wanted to remind you all that if you hear your constituents talking about the search committee, please just remind them that it's not the search committee who selects the president it'll be the Kansas Board of Regents we just move forward with um, providing three to five candidates to the Kansas Board of Regents and then they then select um, so just making sure that there's an understanding of that um, and then I have some updates about the Shocker Support Locker. Um, so we have officially signed a contract and are official and are official partners with the Kansas Food Bank. The RSC signed the contract on SGA's behalf, um, and then a formal announcement will be made in the next few weeks. So that's really awesome. And we also um, we have you might have read a university story about the lo Locker's partnership with Pepsi. Um, we will be receiving a one-time donation of about $13,000 towards the locker. A formal announcement will also come out in a couple of weeks. Um, and then just in the month of September, the locker served about 600 visitors over the course of the month. So it's good to know that it's being used. Um, and then the last thing I have in regards to my report is just encouraging your constituents to apply to the Student Fees Committee, the Elections Commission, and then a uh, our chief of operations position um, and then for the treasurer um, this week in the committee meeting for the chairs of the Senate this week in the meeting what okay this is what she wrote so I'm sorry <laughs> this week in the committee meeting for the chairs of the Senate worked on assigning goals for each of the committees I have been working on a plan to put the goals that our committee has been assigned into place. These are to assist international student organizations in getting funds for events and advertisements, etc., and looking into a returning adult scholarship. The problem of updating the website weekly to include the applications for funding from the Budget and Finance Committee has been difficult to solve. We have decided to pause this until we know of the Senate's decision on the shared drive bill. 
If any of the senators want access to these applications, please come and see me and I will print them off or email them out to you. And then for the Director of Public Relations, um, thank you all for your help and dedication to SGA Week. I appreciate your enthusiasm and I hope it was beneficial. We will be holding more events throughout the rest of the semester, the next being Wu's Birthday Bash on October 21st. Please sign up if you are able to table during that event. It will be from 11 to 1230. And then we are beginning to put together the yearly survey that will be sent out to a representative sample of campus through Qualtrics. We are dedicating two to three questions of, on the survey to each committee. So if you have any questions that you would like to add, please contact your chairs and make sure that they know what questions you want added. I need the questions submitted to me via email October by October 11th. If you have any questions or concerns about this, please reach out. Again, I need the questions by October 11th, which is next Friday. And she says thank you. <laughs> and that's all I have. Are there any questions for the president? See none. Thank you. <clears throat> So item B is my report, but this week was spent doing a lot of administrative things and that would just bore all of you. So if there are any questions, uh, I stand for them. Other than that, all the administrative details will be submitted in the report on Shocker Sink. All right. Hello. Um, hello, I am Josie Cadillo, the student advocate. Um, I have a couple updates. Um, first one would be that next week from October 7th through the 11th is Food for Fines. Um, so if you don't know what Food for Fines is, I'm gonna do a brief explanation. Um, so Food for Fines is a program uh, ran through the student advocate and SGA that um, basically allows students to be able to bring donations for the Shocker Support Locker and have their um, any tick parking tickets that they have waived. Um, so there's some updates to that that we have discussed as a cabinet that I'd like to get your feedback on as a Senate. Um, so we're looking in the interest of making sure that this isn't something that could be at risk in the future. We wanna make sure that we're setting um, standards for the program that they can use going forward, making sure that this isn't something they take away from us eventually or that they say we can no longer do. So we're looking at, um, right now, Food for Fines has allowed um, previously for five items per zero to $25 ticket and seven items per 26 to $50 ticket. So the first change that we would be looking at is actually increasing the amount of items that are required to per ticket. Um, so as a cabinet, we have discussed um, for any ticket up to $30 would be 10 items. And then from $30 to $50 would be 15 items. So that, that is an increase in items that are required per ticket, but that will be benefiting the locker. Um, the second change that we have discussed as a cabinet are the amounts that students are able to do. So this, um, what currently what they've been doing is allowing for students to do up to five citations per week. So with Food for Fines, we run the program twice a semester and that means four times a year. So currently they were allowing um, up to five citations per week. So that's 10 a semester and then 20 a year. Um, so we're looking at 
lowering that amount to three per week. So that would mean six a semester or 12 a year, but then we also are looking to introduce a cap at 10 a year. So that would mean changes that I would like y'all's feedback on or other recommendations if you don't believe that these are fair. Senator Mounts. Um, so I do have two questions, but the first one, um, so I know an issue I ran into last year was I tried to appeal a parking ticket that was $55, or I, I tried to appeal a $50 ticket and it ended up being $55 because I lost the appeal. Does that still fall under that $50, quote unquote, uh, to donate to the shocker, or to the locker for? I would have to get a specific answer on that, but I would assume so, um, but I would also have to ask the parking appeals committee. Yeah, sure. So from last year, whenever I ran it as student advocate, there was a precedent of that. But now that I would assume Josie would need to have those conversations with the new uh, parking manager, because at that time we didn't have a parking manager. So I know a lot of things with parking has changed in regards to what works, what doesn't. So maybe not this year, but it was last year. So there yeah. is a precedent, but that doesn't mean it's going to continue. Yeah. So I will have to ask specifically. Senator Nazir. Um, so I had a question regarding like increasing the amount of items. Um, it's my first year, so I'm like kind of confused. No worries. But, um, so is there a way that you guys like kind of calculated that? Because I don't want it to be like, they're like, oh, it's cheaper to just pay this like small ticket rather than donating, like buying items and donating them. Like I don't want them to be like, yeah. It's just cheaper to do that. Yeah, no, we, um, as a cabinet, we bounced around a couple different numbers, and what and that's what we settled with was 10 and 15, um, mostly because the 15 items covers a $50 ticket. So if you go to the grocery store and buy 15 items at a dollar to $2 a piece, that's still going to be cheaper than if you were to pay the ticket outright. Senator Wang. Um, I want to know if we have update the list of uh, items we request because of, on the past, uh, the first year that we're doing uh, food fi for, for fines, it was plenty of uh, green beans. Right. And then we learned that second year to like get a list of items that we wanted. And then based on the Shocker Food Locker right now, maybe we can come up with a new list of things that is need for students. Yes, so um, to speak to that, there we have adjusted. Um, after I finalize with you all the numbers and everything, there should be this donation form online that will be accurate with, uh, with a small list of what we've requested, but um, Colin, the assistant for the support locker, has sent us over an updated list of what he, basically like a wish list, but even still, we are running low on things like canned vegetables, so we are still accepting those. Um, the only things that we're not accepting this time around are mac and cheese and ramen noodles because we have an excess of those, but actually we need more vegetables even. So we may get a lot more and enough to give us for the whole semester, but they go because I think that the number I heard today in cabinet was that there were 600 uses of, of the Shocker Support Locker just this month. So. Senator Mounts, do you still have a question? Yes. Um, so I am more just concerned of why we are capping the amount of tickets students can pay off because arguably it is more beneficial not only for students but for the support locker to let them pay off as many tickets as they want. Uh, I, for me, it seems like the only reason this might go into effect is it brings more revenue for parking services, which I don't necessarily see as a benefit as opposed to actually helping our students. So I'm wondering like how you came to that conclusion and would it be better um, to not cap it off at that low, uh, at 10 tickets? Right, so um, the consideration for this has nothing to do with parking um, them over there. We've had no discussion thus far about this. this. All these decisions and changes are coming from the cabinet and um, myself. Um, so it's not necessarily about that. I I originally questioned it because we were allowing uh, essentially one student to waive 20 citations in a year and that 
to me is excessive. And if we, if we are looking in the interest of protecting the program and for the future years, we do have to set a limit because then people are going to be in abusing the system and then they will threaten to take away the program. Senator Nazir. Okay, so is this um, opportunity only available to students this time of year or is it year round? And if, um, yeah, I'll just let you answer that. <laughs> yeah. Yes, so we do the program twice a semester, and so it's usually in the months of October and December, and then again in the spring twice. Um, so that means we do it four weeks out of the year, and then, yeah, we hope to do it in the future. Senator James. Is there a graphic or anything that we could share? Because a lot of people have asked me when is the next Food for Fine, so I'd like to get that out to them. Yes, um, so we do have graphics, but we are we have not like pushed them out because we still have been discussing these changes. Um, but by by next week, you should all have graphics that will be shared on social media. Senator Miller. So, I kind of want to touch base on what Senator Mount said because I think that we used to allow five items mm -hmm. and we've cut it down. So I kind of feel like since we already cut it down. Why don't we just make the cap 12 since, like, we did that adjustment? Right. Because, I mean, we are also already taking away eight tickets, which I understand 20 does sound kind of unreasonable because that <laughs> yeah, is a lot of tickets. But, I mean, if we were to just make the cap 12 and make it simple because then, I mean, it is better yeah. for the locker. So. Yeah. Yeah, I agree that the more that we are able to get for the locker, the better. Um, but – I think that the reason why it's important and the reason why um, we have looked at making these changes is because if you do look at the reports from last year, it is the same people that are doing the, the food for fines every semester, and they were doing five each every time, and so that means they got 20 tickets waived last year. And so we are just looking at – honestly, the, the program is a privilege, so it's not something that necessarily we have to do or that – you know, anyone besides us that we would be encouraging to do, you know, that like they've said, parking services has to make money and give out citations to people that are parking illegally. That's their job. But as our job, it's to find solutions for those things. So this is one of the solutions, but we want to protect our program. So we don't want to, we don't want to be enabling students that are getting 20 citations a year. Senator Peterson. Um, I'm not necessarily against this, so I don't know, want you to take it like that, but just for clarification, this isn't coming from like um, any other, this is coming from the executive board for precautions, not as an actual like um, con concern from um, people who are taking care of the support locker or the fines, correct? Um, well, there's been discussion about how, like, there's been a lot of discussion about how we can introduce safeguards for the program because we are noticing the increase of people, the same people using it, um, the same people getting multiple citations, and then that kind of defeats the purpose of what we're trying to do with the program. So we're just trying to basically make sure that no one, we're not enabling people to continue to just get citations to have them forgiven, and that we're also being fair still but we're not being excessive. But it is it did start from a place from from my perspective to make sure that we are being fair and that we're not enabling students. Senator Nguyen. Okay, so I kind of have two questions. So the first one is kind of like a repetition of Senator Peterson's question. So this was completely birthed out of the cabinet's concern as a prophylactic measure for like protecting it? Okay. Okay, so then the second um, question would be, if there's a repeat repeat offenders that are happening every year, why don't we just create like a tier-like program where if you have over a certain number of citations, then the number goes up instead of like... Yeah. We, like, we had discussions about that as a cabinet as well, possibly looking at if you do so many per, per year, whichever, but it is that's why I'm here talking with you all and getting feedback because we didn't want to start introducing so many of those limitations without consulting as a group um, but this is just where at least we're starting and uh, we do kind of have to make the decisions before it does start next week so that this can be what the standard is for the year so Senator Tucker yeah, I just really quickly want to note this idea of the 20 tickets 
being waived as a sense of enabling students is, I feel, erroneous since our job here is supposed to be to support students. Instead, it is in fact enabling parking to exploit students under the, the constriction of parking. The lack of availability of parking has created a situation where students are forced to get parking tickets. So I just want to make that quick note that I don't think we should look at waiving 20 tickets as enabling students as much as enabling the exploitation of students. Let's keep now, the questioning I, period to questions. I understand, just to comment to that, um, I understand that 100% because myself, I literally just paid a $25 citation today and I didn't even think about food for fines. So I'm not one of those people that just goes, got a ticket, I'm gonna be used food for fines it. But to comment to that, I have heard, the reason why we started to consider these changes is because we've been hearing students saying out loud or posting on social media or whatever, don't worry if you get your citations, food for fines is coming up so you can get up to five citations waived, da 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 And that's not what the program's for. It is to help students and it is to relieve that burden of up to however many citations per year. But we need to make sure that people are understanding that that's not what this is. This isn't just a, I'm gonna park here because I know I'm, I can food for fines it in a couple weeks. That's not what this is about. So it's really about protecting the program. And I know it does sound harsh or cruel or whatever to say that the, it, it, it can enable some students, but because I have heard those things of said by other students that I don't care if I get a citation because I, I know I can food for fines it. And those people may be the people that are showing repeatedly on the Excel that they're doing 20 citations just last year. That means to me at least that there's a problem and I need to protect the, pro the program. Senator Nazir, do you still have a question? Yes, um, so I've volunteered at the locker a couple times this year and I've noticed that when we do get um, donations in, like they, we run out really quickly with it, whether it's in one or two days. Um, so I guess, would it be possible to kind of have it like a year round thing, not like increasing it, I guess, so much mm -hmm. that way that we could be getting food um, more often. Um, parking services wouldn't be, I guess, losing money as often because you kind of have to think about when, like, not planning where to par where to park, but like, like using that. Yeah. Um, so what would that possibly be an option for us? I think that that's a great idea. Um, we could hash it out. I think that we could talk about that for, f for the future because once again, this isn't something that is guaranteed. So the next student advocate could come in and choose they don't wanna do it and that's how it is until somebody else chooses to do it. So that could be a discussion of how do we make this better for the future? Is this something we agree to do year round and we cap it at you can only do 10 a year or something like that? You know, that's just a separate conversation. Senator Mounts. So I guess, obviously, Food for Fines and the Shocker Support Locker, SGA has most, if not total, control over. Um, so my question is, are there any other areas of the university that has control or say over what where the Food for Fines program happens? I would say that it would it is a partnership between the student advocate and parking services at this time. And so if we want to protect the program, then we can look at, I don't know Senate wise what would happen, but we could make it to where it's, you know, legal that this is done yearly so that that is a protection in some way, but that would be discussions with parking services as well, that they would be willing to do it for the next five years at least or something like that. And that we write it in our, in our resolutions and stuff that this is something we do for the next five years at least. I don't know. Gabe, do you want to speak to that? Um, so like the logistics of the program are, are all the student advocate. Um, this is a student advocate initiative, not a SGA Senate initiative. They're a part of SGA, but it's a student advocate initiative. When it was originally um, created, and correct me if I'm wrong, um, it was intended to be a partnership between us and parking with the understanding that at any moment, if parking wants to get up out of that partnership, then we can't do it anymore. Um, because even though we may say, oh, we want to do this, they're the ones who actually waive the tickets, not us. Um, and so 
we all when we were in it last year, the year before when um, our former student advocate Rihanna um, started talking about the idea, and then when Katrina last year took it over, um, it was always with this understanding that the minute parking says we're done, we, we're done um, because we as an association do not get to waive. Um, citations only parking can do that this was kind of our compromise of parking the tickets how do we best solve that and that's where this idea came from yeah and and to speak that to that um that's why i think that it it is important for us to look at and look at making sure that these that the program is reasonable once again from a student perspective i completely understand wanting to like max out on your benefits and make sure you know get as much as you can and whatever but what I can see happening is if we continue with the way that we were going, they will see that we have the same students doing 20 citations a year because they know it's the same time and that we need to make sure that this is reasonable so that parking can, not that they cannot, but that they don't feel the need to come in and say, this is not being used appropriately and potentially take it away. With a motion. Senator Zacharias. Motion, I move to move to item, um, section six, item A. Was that a motion to end the questioning period? Yes. We'll require a second. second. Senator Cowden with a second. I don't remember, is that, one, that one's not debatable, right, Gabe? Right, that's not debatable for the, right? Yeah, it is, as it is your motion, right, as it is your motion, you have the right to speak first if you wish. Um, I believe a lot of the questions that have been asked are the same questions over and over, and we have other reports and stuff to get to before we adjourn and go into our committees tonight, so yeah. Anyone else wishing to debate at this time? Senator Nazir? Uh, before I uh, say something, is this like just about the motion? Um, I think this is a really important topic just because um, Josie's asking for our input because as an association we need to figure out exactly what needs to happen because there are some issues that are really like a pressing matter. Yeah, so I, I would... Sorry, I don't know if it's my place to speak yet, but I would just say I would want to know if anyone has any other recommendations than what I have currently recommended. Is there anyone else wishing to debate at this time? Senator Turan. Okay, so um, I know that a, a lot of the things that have been said, we've kind of gone back and forth, but essentially every time she's responded, she needs a response by next week or something to be finalized by next week. So can, I guess, it doesn't ha I know it doesn't have to be decided now, but can we just like decide to talk about it at a certain other point, you know what I'm saying? Senator Flores, do you still have a debate? Um, yeah, I think it's important that we talk about this and I think that there were only a few uh, people w wanting to speak uh, anyways. So we should just have those conversations now and allow that to happen. And I know that it's unfortunate that sometimes uh, uh, Senate goes a little longer than we would like to and that I know that we all want to go to our committee meetings afterwards, but this is an important topic and it's an important um, program that SGA is responsible for. And I think these discussions need to be had and all sides need to be heard. Senator Mounts, do you still have a debate? Yes. So myself, I have very, I guess, I'm very opinionated on this topic, and I think, but that being said, um, I think this should be something that the Senate as a whole is able to discuss and not just ask questions. Um, and so I think right now I, it is best to move on. Um, definitely, po I suggest posing your questions to the student advocate later, either after the meeting or sometime through the rest of this week. And when we reconvene on Wednesday, uh, we could add something to the agenda or s we could do something about this issue and finish this questioning period. But I think for the time and also for the sake of the student advocate, because um, these are very hard questions and maybe not even all questions we have 
or maybe the student advocate doesn't even have answers to all these questions, um, or they're not even right on they're not even on topic. I think that we should just move on right now. Anyone else wishing to speak in debate at this time? Senator Nazir. Um, just one last point. Um, our jobs are to represent our constituents, and if we're not taking the time to do so and we're just trying to cut corners, um, I think that's not fair to them. So, Senator Tron. I don't see us moving on as cutting corners. Um, I think we should get all our background information and obviously some research. I think we can all do some research on our own and then come together with a de definite plan because, like I said, we could just go in circles all night with unanswered questions and, um, you know, nothing to back up our opinions, you know, and um, information on how to proceed with this because that those are pretty big decisions, like different numbers and caps and whether this program goes year-round. Like, it's not up to just one person and not just a few answers. And I think, so yeah, we need to move on. again real quickly? Um, so the only thing is that this program will start on Monday. So mainly what we need to decide now is that is how m the numbers on how many items we're going to take and or basically like if I don't hear any other recommendations from the Senate, then we're just going to move forward with what the cabinet has decided. So if anyone else has recommendations besides what I've said, that would be helpful. But yeah. Senator Miller. Do you still have a debate on the motion at hand? Okay, so to end this and to avoid circling questions and everything like that, can we not just come up with our own numbers right now with her and then all of us vote on it as a Senate to help? Because this is an important matter, and if it is going into effect Monday, I mean, we can't just – push it off until next Wednesday and then after everyone's come up with their own, because I mean, next Wednesday it's already gonna be in effect, so. Senator Nguyen. I got you. So, be real 100% with everyone. We cannot legislate our nonpartisan branch arm of the student government. So a vote will do nothing because we cannot legislate a, our nonpartisan arm of the student government. These are solely recommendations that we're making because we can't tell our student advocate what to do through a program and initiative in which the student advocate controls. We can't legislate that arm of our governance. That's why I'm looking for feedback on if you guys think that um, 10 items for up to $30 or 15 items for $50 is not reasonable or if from, you know, speaking from your constituents, if you feel that is reasonable and also if three times a week, which would be we did discuss 12, the cap has not been um, solidified, and so I did want to get feedback on the cap as well. Um, but if we did three times a week, no cap, then it would be 12 a, 12 a year. And then if we did have a cap, then it, we were thinking 12 uh, or 10 a person. So feedback on reasonable, if those numbers are reasonable. Honestly, we were looking at other numbers, and then this was what we came up with. So, Point of information. Mm -hmm. Senator Mounts. How is the Senate supposed to give recommendations when we can only ask questions during the questioning period? Is that, yeah, I don't know how this That's works. a fact. So the recommendations would come after. So you're asking questions in which to clarify what the student advocate is talking about. You could potentially suspend Robert's rules in order to have a informal discussion about it. That could be another way in which to do it. Um, you could form your questions in such a way as it gives the student Can advocate an idea that yes, that would work and yes, we could do that. Those are a few options, uh, but Senator Nguyen, you still have the floor. Okay, so m my question changed now. So now that we're still debating um, Senator Zacharias's motion, do we need to like, un we now have to vote finish. that down and then go forward with um, suspending Robert's rules. We do have to finish that one before we move on to any others. Senator Morgan. Motion to end debate. That is the motion we're currently on. Anybody else wishing to debate in order to? Motion. To oh, wait, to debate. You're right. Does require a second. 
Senator Day with the second. This is debatable. Is anyone wishing to debate? Senator Morgan, it is your... Absolutely not. All right. Does anybody else? Senator... Miles. Motion to pass by unanimous consent. Are there any objections? Debate has now closed. We'll move into the vote to close the questioning period. All those in favor? All opposed? Thank you. Motion carries, having received simple majority. With that, questioning period is now closed. Thank you for your time. We will move on to the next. Uh, Michael, Josie, yeah. unless you have anything else to report on. Yeah. yeah. Um, so we've ended the question about food for fines. If you have any other reports, you can give that. Um, so uh, what else do I have in my book? I don't think so right now. Um, if there's anyone that is available next week that will be in the office to be accepting donations, and then, of course, the shock support locker will need help as well um, putting away all of the do donations. So keep that in mind. But I'll be communicating with you all about that. Um, but besides that, that would be the biggest thing of your concern. Thank you. With a motion. Senator Mounts. Uh, I motion to suspend Robert's rules so we may discuss uh, the foods for fines. Does require a second. 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 Senator Morgan with the second. Thank you. I knew that part. So this one is not debatable, uh, as Senator Mounts pointed out. Thank you for checking the list. Uh, it does, however, require a two-thirds. As a reminder, that is 30 individuals. All those in favor, please raise your hand and hold them high. Please hold your hands. Please count. Make sure that everybody same numbers. All opposed? We have the same number. Thank you. Receiving a total of 25 in favor and requiring a 30 in favor, we will not be doing that. Moving back into item six, other reports. Item A, academics chair. Oh, point of information. Can I? I thought I had speaking rights. So we removed the, re the Senate voted to remove all of the uh, not Robert's rules for it to remove you as a member of the Senate and that goes with it I don't have well I just forgot of Am one thing Gabe? that I guess I needed to add to my report I am available tomorrow from 11 to 5 p.m. if anyone would like to come to the office to speak with me about these matters I do not have a report that's useful for Senate, but I am open for questions. Are there any questions for the chair? Senator Sanchez. Um, just out of curiosity, I remember doing something about, or hearing something being done about the plus or minus um, scale. Is there anything talked about in your committee currently about plus or minus grading? No, my committee has not met yet because we didn't meet quorum, so we haven't talked about that. Any other questions for the chair? Stealing my mic. 
With that, we'll move into item B, safety and student services chair. So next Tuesday, October 8th, it's gonna be the safety walk, part, take two. Um, it's gonna be in room 257 at 7.30 p.m. We're having pizza and water. <laughs> That's it. Are there any questions for the chair? Senator Babin? Can you just repeat the date again? I missed it. October 8th, next Tuesday. Senator James? What time would you like the senators to meet and where? So uh, for senators, it would be helpful if you guys showed up at 7. You can either meet in the SGA suite or I will already be in the other um, room 257 at 7 p.m. if you just want to go in there as well. Are there any other questions for the chair? See none. Thank you. We'll move into item C, diversity, empowerment, and inclusion chair. All right. So for the administrative side and for my committee side, it's been a really slow week up until yesterday. I thought we weren't having a committee meeting. Now we are. So uh, that's really not. It's super important, we haven't really worked on a lot. That being said, I actually attended my first meeting on the President's Diversity Council today. Uh, that is only the second time they have met so far this year because they do only meet monthly. Um, however, there are, I will plug some events later um, that we talked about, but for the most part, uh, some things I wanted to bring uh, just to the attention of the Senate is first, um, they did present some information. So. Uh, Surprisingly, our international student enrollment went up this year, uh, which was not expected to happen. Um, so that does bring a lot of revenue to the university and also kind of helps DEI take a position because one of our goals this year is uh, to help support international students better. And so the more international students we have, i.e. the more we should do to help them. Um, and then we also had a 3% increase in minority student uh, attending, or minority students attending WSU with a 7% increase of Hispanic students specifically. And then we actually have gotten, uh, officially uh, gotten over 16,000 students. So now uh, Wichita State University has 16,058 students in attendance, which we haven't had for 30 years, something like that is the number I saw-ish. So we should be uh, very happy about that. Um, otherwise, I was requested by the different uh, committee chairs of the President's Diversity Council. There are six. There's the Enrollment Admissions Recruitment Committee, Retention and Engagement of Diverse Groups, Marketing and Communications, Benchmarking, Research and Analysis, Campus Culture and Student Outreach, and Bias Incident Response Team. I, I, over the next four weeks up until I have my next meeting on November the 6th, will be meeting individually with all the chairs of those committees. Um, if you have any concerns regarding those topics or anything, I can figure out who it needs to go to, please come talk to me because I, at this point, am going to be acting as your liaison uh, between SGA and the PDC. Um, other than that, uh, is there anything else? Give me one second, I apologize. Um, I believe that is it, um, and then I am open for questions. Are there any questions for the chair? Thank you. With that, we'll move into item D, Ways and Means Chair. No report, but I'm open for questions. Any questions for the Ways and Means Chair? Seeing none, we'll move into item E, Special Committee on Membership Chair. Okay, good evening, everyone. Uh, so we've had two meetings um, in the past couple weeks. Um, so basically, our committee is tasked with evaluating the membership of the Senate right now and the composition of it. Um, and basically the allocation of the seats. 
Um, and so we've been discussing a few ideas, um, and one of the ones that we really like right now are, um, so how the seats are dispersed right now is that for academic colleges, you get a minimum of two representatives or senators, and then you get another one per every thousand people um, in that population. And then for all the non-academic seats, you get one, minimum of one, and then the same, another one per extra thousand. Um, and so um, one of the things that we were looking at is we have 64 available seats in the Senate right now, and we have about 44 senators that are filled of those, 45, 45 senators that are filling those seats. Um, and this kind of uh, disparity has, is not specific to this Senate. Um, it's been kind of a reoccurring thing ever since I've been here, basically. Um, and so we're kind of looking at if we need to reduce the amount of available seats. Um, basically, if that big number is going to be beneficial for a legislating group, having that large of a group. Um, and so one of the uh, proposals that we've been he heavily evaluating right now is keeping the academic um, disperse of the seats how it is right now, um, but then looking at the non-academic seats changing the threshold from 1,000 to 2,000. So you would get another representative if you had an extra 2,000 people rather than 1,000. Um, some of the preliminary numbers were kind of worked out by Senator Wright, and we thought that would lower the um, number of seats from 64 to about 45-ish, um, which is kind of where we're at right now, and we think that's a pretty nice number. Um, so that's kind of what we've been thinking about. Um, and then we also were kind of discussing if we wanted to act as more of a Senate, how you see on the national scale, um, minimum two seats and that's it, or if we want to continue how we are kind of right now since we are the only governing body, student governing body um, on this campus to kind of mend the two, you know, congressional and Senate into one, how we kind of are right now. Um, and so by that proposal that I just mentioned, seems like we kind of want to stick to how we are right now, meshing the two. Um, but, yeah. Oh, one last thing that we also discussed today is um, looking at how we do appointments, um, kind of the scheduling of them. Because um, right now, we kind of just fill seats as we go. Um, and we thought maybe limiting when we do appointments to the end of one semester and then again at the end of the next semester that might increase the competitiveness and um, kind of the retention or, or whatever of the seats that we have now. Um, and so that's kind of what we've been discussing and looking at right now. And I'm open to questions. Are there any questions for the chair? Senator Nguyen. What do you see as the pros and cons of decreasing the Senate size? Uh, yeah, so we discussed that pretty heavily. Um, I think that one big thing is that decreasing the size, obviously, um, you know, we don't want to have less representation of students, um, but we also have to evaluate, does just having more people discussing ideas in Senate necessarily equate to better representation? And that's kind of what we've been balancing, basically. Um, kind of what we've been talking about. Does that answer your question? Yeah, and so what is your personal stance on that matter? Um, I, I kind of like the proposal that we've been doing right now. Um, I don't think having 100 people in Senate is going to better represent the students that, than the number that we have right now. Um, I think that more of our resources can be diverted from constantly recruiting more people to be appointed. Um, more of our resources can be diverted away from that and kind of into more uh, other things. Um, and so that's kind of my personal opinion on that. Senator Izzo. So if this proposal goes forward, what would be the final number of Senate seats? Uh, so we haven't pinned down a final number yet. We're still working on that. I want to have at least one more meeting because we're supposed to have a proposal by the next meeting, correct? 
Um, yeah, I want to have one more meeting before that so we can kind of nail down all the specifics, um, kind of get the bill drafted at least. Um, but the rough estimate right now, if we went through with that proposal, would be around 45-ish. Sorry, that was actually the by the end. It's the last meeting of October. Oh, last is meeting. what that was. Okay, oh, good. Uh, so you, you got some time. Thank you, Senator James. Um, you may not have this answer, but since this isn't your first session that you've been a senator, um, are there any seats that you've seen like vacant multiple times? Um, I would say out of state I've seen kind of in and out um, the uh, underrepresented seats are fairly new so I can't really speak to that much um, and then just other academic colleges but not so we, we would always have academic college senators but maybe not to the capacity that they could be fulfilled Senator Mounts. So you kind of mentioned us being a combination of like a Senate and House of Representatives. So is it common for student governments to have a more unic to be unicameral or bicameral? Uh, that's also something we discussed. I think Gabe might have a better interpretation of that. There's like half and half. Uh, there's probably a majority where um, it's, it's just a single branch, um, like just one. I, didn't, I don't know how to say the words, so I'm not going to bother. Um, but there's also, there's some institutions that have, um, you see a lot more East Coast that you tend to have um, an upper and a lower house, whether that be undergrad students and grad students. Um, our setup is very unique in the sense that it's one house that represents all students. There's not a divide of undergraduate students to graduate students or academic colleges to our non-academic colleges. Um, there, there's just different, various different places. Um, when I said half and half, that's a lie because there's just different everywhere you go. There's not necessarily one single course that many places use. And it also depends on what kind of institution you're at, what kind of student government you are, um, and really what coast you live in and what area of this country you are. Any other questions? Senator Coates? Has the committee um, talked about, like, the? I know you mentioned the appointment process here. Um, have you guys discussed the fact that when you appoint somebody by our Senate, we're not really representing, representing those constituents that those people are representing because they are appointed? Um, and how would you fix that with your membership chair staff? Yeah, I think we just barely touched on that aspect of it. Um, but I know that has been a concern in past years. You know, half the Senate ended up being appointment, and that's not necessarily who the student body voted for. Um, I think that's definitely something to keep in mind um, as we continue to have these conversations. Um, but I think I think that's a good point, and I think I'll we'll definitely talk about that in our next meeting. Any other questions for the chair? Seeing none, thank you very much. We will move into item <coughs> seven, appointments. Item A. My turn to read them. So SB-62-06. Four, appointing Senate Standing Committee members, authored by Michael Berth, President of the Senate. Uh, first action, to appoint members of the Academics Committee. I hereby nominate Kate Miller and Bridget Kennedy to the positions of Academics Committee member. Action two, to appoint member of the Shocker Support Locker Committee. I hereby nominate Joseph Ritchie to the position Take out that S, please. Uh, to the position of academics committee member. Sorry for that typo. Uh, with this, uh, Kate is new and we've already had our, sorry. We have already had our uh, new senator training where I discussed the committees and told her that I was going to place her on this one. And she essentially consented to it. 
Uh, Bridget has also you know, expressed a desire to be on the academic side of it. Uh, she's not a senator, so this would be our first student on a committee. And the academics chair had mentioned that she was would like more members. Uh, and with the fact that Joseph Ritchie is getting pulled out of academics because he's unable to meet the time, not only of academics, but for any other committee with their set times, with his requirements, I felt it was appropriate to place her there. Uh, and then I just mentioned that Joseph is getting pulled out and placed there for those restrictions. I do stand for questions if there are any. Senator Babin. So is Joseph Ritchie on being placed on the Academics Committee or the Shocker Support Locker Committee? Shocker Support Locker. Sorry, we'll get that corrected. Any other questions? All right. With that, we'll move into the debating period. Is there anyone wishing the to motion. debate at this time? Senator James. Motion to pass by unanimous consent. Any objections? Seeing none, SB-62-064 has passed with unanimous consent. We will move past Section 8, Unfinished Business, as we don't have any. With a motion. Senator Matson. I move to amend the agenda to include FB-62-009 under new business. FB. That was FB, right? That's correct. 009. Would you mind telling us a little bit about it so we know what we're voting on? Of course. Uh, so this is a funding bill. It is uh, for organizational funding. Two requests that we had. The first was organizational funding for the Japanese Cultural Association uh, in the amount of $1,000 uh, that will be going towards uh, funding event expenses that they have. And the second organizational funding request is by the Association of Hindu Students in America. Uh, this was also this is for an operational expense in the form of $500, uh, and the Budget and Finance Committee uh, is drafted this to fulfill, to fulfill both of those requests in in full, so $1,000 and $500 respectively. Give us a second while we pull it up. So with that, thank you. And this is not debatable. So all those in favor of adding this to the agenda, please raise their hand and hold them high. All opposed? So that one does require two-thirds of present. 
which is 22, and it did receive 29 total votes. So we will go ahead and add that one under new business item C. Moving back to item A. So FB-62-007, organizational funding, authored by Colleen Osterman, the SGA treasurer, sponsored by the Budget and Finance Committee. Does the author wish to speak to this bill? No, I think it's good. It looks good to me. Thank you. Are there any questions for the author? Seeing none, we'll move into the debate. Is anyone wishing to debate at this time? With a motion. Senator Mounts. I move to pass by unanim unanimous consent. Any objections? Seeing none, FB-62-007. Has passed with unanimous consent of the Senate. <laughs> Moving into item B, FB-62-008, individual funding. You got it pulled up. Does the author wish to speak to this one? No. Are there any questions for the author? Seeing none, we'll move into the debate period with the motion and I, move. I move to pass by unanimous consent any objections seeing none FB-62-008 has passed with unanimous consent of the Senate <clears throat> moving into item C FB-62-009 is that organization? Mm -hmm. Organizational funding. Does the author wish to speak to this bill? Um, yes. So the reason that it's coming on the floor tonight is there were some, what would you say, Gabe, like unforeseen circumstances? Yeah. yeah. Uh, that were um, unavoidable on the part of the committee. So that's why it's here tonight. But uh, if you have questions, you can come ask me about it. It's a long story. Okay. Are there any questions for the treasurer? Seeing none, we'll move into the debating period. With a motion. Senator Mounts. Motion to pass by unanimous consent. Any objections? <coughs> With that, FB-62-009 has passed with unanimous consent of the Senate. We'll move past uh, section 10, swearing in to section 11, remarks and announcements. Does anyone have a remark or an announcement at this time? Senator Mounts. So uh, I would like to plug, uh, where is it at? The, basically it's the w Wichita State Open House Weekend. Uh, that is from October 4th through 6th. Um, I would just Google it. Uh, there's a whole list of events going on, so I would take a look at that and encourage people to go. Um, other than that, uh, that is at least it for uh, events for as of right now. Any other remarks and announcements? Senator Miller. All right, so after this week, you won't have to hear me say it anymore because it's <laughs> this Friday, chili cook-off. Come get you some. Katrina Miller, she's going to be uh, judging, so come make sure we keep her honest. Best chili, all that. So, but yeah, come on out. RSC, West Patio. Senator Ezel. What time and where is the chili thing, whatever? Whatever. 
What time, what time and, and place is the chili cook-off? All right, so it is in the RSC West patio, and the time is, I know this, um, off of the top of my head, I swear I'm not looking it up, uh, 12 to 2, off the top of my head, so, RSC West patio. <laughs> and then uh, pass on to your constituents that um, this is all by donation, so, I mean, the contestants are understanding that they're winning their prize, so, but we're not expecting anyone who comes and gets a bowl of chili to, like, have a bouncer there, like, hey, five bucks, cough it up. Yeah. So, I mean, it's all by donation, so if your constituents wants to come out and get free chili, they can. If they want to support the student veteran organization, they can do that. So, we're really excited. We got a pretty good amount of contestants, so should be pretty fun. Senator Babin. I have two. They're both pretty quick, though. So the first one is I really hope that everyone's planning on being on a team for Moonball. It's um, November 2nd, I think, 2nd or 3rd, one of those days. It's the Saturday. But you should do it. It's it's really fun. It's just a volleyball tournament. So if we got, like, eight, six to eight senators who wanted to make a volleyball team, that would be really fun. Um, it does support Girls on the Run, so I think that would be really cool. My other one is I just wanted to remind people that it's a really good idea to put your pronouns in things like your Instagram bios, Twitter bios, Facebook bios, signatures on your emails, all of those kinds of things, uh, just to normalize it. Um, and it's just a really good idea for everyone to do that. Senator Flores, do you still have one? Hi, so the Wichita State debate team went to Kentucky this weekend, and Heike, we killed it. Um, yeah, we had three teams competing. Um, there were like over 100 teams there. Um, it, there were three different divisions. My partner and I in our division ended up being semifinalists. We got a cool trophy. It was super sick, and then we had a 12-hour drive back from Lexington. So... Yeah, that was pretty cool. Senator Matson. Hi, everyone. Quick event plug. I'm going to share it in the Facebook group, so this will be quick. But if you're interested in public policy or international relations, there will be on October 20th, that's a Sunday, right here in this room at 5.30, a United Nations Day dinner. We'll be having a speaker from the United Nations New York office come and present to us on uh, migration and refugees. He's actually uh, a director at the United Nations on that topic. Uh, and you'll get to have a meal. It's all for $5. Uh, if you're interested, ask me questions, or you can check out the event on the Facebook page. Thank you. Any other remarks and announcements? Director Haas. Speaking of the Facebook page, so unfortunately we can't make it so that you all share each other's posts because it is a private page that I have to add individuals to. So by making it not private, you would, that's the, okay, I would have to make it not a private group for you all to be able to share to your individual pages. So, just click on the graphic, save it to your phone, repost. Sorry. Senator Turan. Sip and See is this Friday. They have cornhole and trivia teams you can sign up and make with, with your friends. There'll be like food trucks and really neat stuff, and they're going to be unveiling that it is the the new name for the EEB, and yeah, it's just, it'll be a fun night, so go. Any other remarks and announcements? Senator Castillo. Um, I have two quick announcements. Um, so applications to become a transition mentor are now open. Um, you can find them at uh, wichita.edu slash tm. Um, and then our office, which is the Office of First Year Programs, uh, tomorrow it's hosting an event called Pancakes and Pajamas. Um, it's going to be held in the Shocker Grill and Lanes. It runs from 9 p.m. to 11.30. Um, so we'd love to see you guys there. Treasurer Osterman. Um, just really quick, one of the organizations that came in for funding wanted me to um, plug their event for them. So the Association of Hindu Students in America is having their Garba Night on – oh, let me pull it up. Sorry. It's um, this weekend, October 5th at 7 p.m. From, from 7 p.m. to 11.30. 
um, and it so sounds like a really cool event. So, there we go. Senator Zacharias. Remember, all of your committee meetings are right after this in their normal rooms. Save budget and finance, right? <clears throat> Senator Mounts. I'm sorry, I just remembered like a bunch of other things. Uh, first of all, congratulations to Senator Zacharias for getting engaged. Uh, second, uh, give me one second, sorry. Um, so just some other things. Uh, there is ODI's Diversity Lecture Series coming up. Uh, there is the Art of Code Switching hosted by Harold Wallace III. That is Thursday, October 10th at 6 p.m. On October 17th at 7 p.m. at the Eugene M. Hughes Metropolitan, uh, Metropolitan Complex, to keep in mind this sits about a thousand students, um, we will be having Niall DeMarco, a famous LGBT and deaf activist and actor and was on Dancing with the Stars and all this stuff. I highly encourage you to go. Uh, he will actually be signing the entire presentation with his interpreter, so I'm super excited to go see that. Um, Next, so I got an email from Danielle Johnson regarding, if I can find it, um, sorry, I had accidentally backed out of the email. Uh, anyways, so it is a event hosted by ODI that um, we need uh, another panelist for. So she has invited me to do it. It's called the Diversity Leadership Symposium Student Panel. So there's going to be two uh, presentations. Um, we need another representative from SGA. I will most likely be doing uh, the 1040 to 11 10 a.m. session and then there'll be one more session uh, that I need another senator for. So if you can please please get in contact with me. That will be Thursday uh, October 10th. And then lastly, I swear I, I'm really sorry but I feel that it is our duty to give the recommendations that we think are important from our students and our constituents, uh, albeit to whatever it is necessary to give their, I guess, opinions for. Uh, I am rather disappointed we were not able to discuss the issues dealing with parking and food for fines tonight. I am kind of disappointed in quite a few senators, um, and I know that it is something that is very time sensitive, so I do urge all of you to please, please talk to the student advocate and make sure she knows because we, we won't ever talk about this again, at least up until the next Food for Fines. And that could affect hundreds, if not thousands of students at this university. So I urge you to please go talk to the student advocate as soon as you possibly can. And please talk to your constituents and get their opinions and feelings. Senator Wang. Thank you. So first, um, Josie is free tomorrow from 11 to 5. I just check with her. And uh, Uzbek event, it's this Saturday. So if you don't know what Uzbek event is, you should definitely go. It's the largest service event in the city of Wichita. It's hosted by shockers. So um, Community Service Board is hosting it. You can find it at, uh, on Volunteer ICT. So it's a one platform every student have access to uh, at Wichita State. So you should definitely sign up or look up Uzbek event. Um, also, last thing, I think it's last thing. Get you Senator Hour saying yay. Senator Day. Thank you. Um, I would like to encourage the Senate to remember that part of your job as senators is to utilize your ability to question officers of SGA in a public setting. Simply avoiding difficult questioning periods in the name of, you know, avoiding lengthy time commitments essentially voids your duty to utilize this rare public outlet to question officers who can thus avoid accountability. So I think it's very important to utilize this and just bear that in mind. Any other remarks uh, and announcements? Director Haas. Hi, so Josie was going to talk to you guys about this tonight, but I guess I don't know why Josie was. Oh, anyways, it's kind of my thing. Oh, I mean, okay. Whoa. <laughs> Trunk or Treat is happening on October 19th um, from 1 to 4 p.m. I just now added it to the October sign-up sheet that I put out earlier today. So um, I will post this on our Facebook page again once meeting is over. So if you guys would like to do Trunk or Treat uh, with SGA, just go ahead and sign up on there. Any other remarks and announcements? Senator Castillo. Um, one last announcement. Um, so the School of Performing Arts is having their second show of the season. 
um, called The Moors. It opens uh, tomorrow at 7.30. Um, it's going to run to till, till October 6th. Um, so there'll be showings at 7.30 from the 3rd to the 5th, and then two matinees at 2 p.m., on, one on Saturday and one on Sunday. Any other remarks and announcements? Senator Waru. Uh, well, mine is not uh, an announcement, but it's a question, a concern. Uh, I would like to request that uh, we could be having some something to drink during this period because sitting here for about uh, is it three hours is just a long time for a person to concentrate. At least we need to have something in our stomach so that we are able to concentrate and think. Senator Mounts. So as a response to that, we did try last year to kind of like have each committee or something, or I guess, no, constituent block to bring food, and it like totally fell through. So if you guys want to try that again, we can totally do it, but I'm going to hold every single one of you accountable to actually do it. So we can set something up. I'm willing to work with the other committee chairs to try to get this organized, but ultimately you guys need to do your job and bring food if you really want to do that. If you do end up bringing food, you're also responsible for cleaning up after yourselves. That being said, are there any other remarks and announcements? I saw some hands that are not up anymore. All right. With that, we will adjourn at 8.40 p.m. with a silent roll call. All those present for the budget and finance, please come see me. DEI committee, we will be meeting in our normal room in five minutes. Please hurry.